Yeah, I suppose for me, you know, being born in, in Auckland and being a, I suppose, uh, born and bred Auckland boy, um, you know, through the 70s, there was some amazing epic games, um, even going back that far, coming to watch them play here at Eden Park. But for me, what really stands out, obviously, would be the, the game of the century in 1985. I had the wonderful privilege of being in the, st in the stands, having played the curtain raiser for the Auckland Colts against uh, the Canterbury Colts. And uh, I was sitting with Zinni Brook and uh, you know, a couple of other my mates that were, we were very young, you know, 1920, and just couldn't believe what we experienced that day. I'll, I'll never forget it. And when JK scored that try and that big up and under in the post when they, Canterbury nearly came back and won it, I mean, it was unbelievable. Um, but it was very special for me because um, that night I was also called by John Hart to, to see if I could join the team, uh, well, told to come and join the team, <laughs> and which I said, yes, sir. Um, hopped, hopped on the bus the next morning with all those great Auckland players, and they had the shield. Fats was holding the shield, and they were they bit bit hungover, but um, you know it was a happy camp, and, <laughs> and I, I couldn't ask for a better introduction to um, you know just being part of that um, Auckland Canterbury experience, and then and that's where my career started. Yeah, my my first recollection of playing for Auckland against Canterbury was. Um, the next year in 86 and we played them up here at Eden Park and um, I, all I remember was I was playing number eight and um, I was marking Dale Atkins <laughs> and mate Dale Atkins was, he was uh, a, a, man, a man mountain really for me, I was only 20 years old and here I was marking, uh, he never made, became an All Black but he probably epitomised everything that was great about Canterbury rugby, tough, uncompromising, you know, just um, you know, amazing fortitude, you know, that whole spirit. Um, but that, we played them out here and, and um, we did win quite well. Um, and there was a period there in the sort of late 80s and 90s that I think we had the, the handle of Canterbury, but, you know, it was, um, you know, a, a period that we <laughs> made the most of, but it, it, it came in swings and roundabouts and, um, you know, they, they, they came back a lot stronger in the, in the late 90s and, and obviously the, the last decade they've been um, very dominant. In terms of uh, the, I suppose, a very special relationship between Canterbury rugby and Auckland rugby, I mean, it goes back as far as I can ever remember as a young boy watching, you know, those, even going back to when I was watching my boyhood hero B.G. Williams play, put on the blue and white hoops and play the red and black hoops. I mean, it was still the game um, that every Aucklander wanted to win and, and there was so much heritage and history surrounding that that fixture, I mean, nothing compares for a, a young Auckland boy then to play Canterbury, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, even even during those early uh, years when as, as an Auckland player, even though we might have had the medal on them uh, during those early, that er early period, um, you know, it was still the game, you know, it was still the, the toughest game mentally, it was still the most um, uh, challenging game physically. Um, you know, this is going back in the days when they, they, were, they had rucks and you'd, as a loose forward, you just knew not to get stuck at the bottom of a Canterbury ruck because you get spit, spit out, spit, spit out, spit it out the back, I don't know what the word is, but <laughs> you'd go flying out the back with, uh, you know, all these uh, ruck marks all over you. Um, you, knew, you knew never to lie at the bottom of a ruck, on the wrong side of a ruck, <laughs> against those Canterbury uh, men. I mean, it was, it was intimidating stuff. Um, but that, that, there has always been, I suppose it's, you know, Auckland being the biggest city in New Zealand, but then Christchurch and Canterbury being the biggest region in the South Island, it's this north-south thing. I think it's all wrapped up with that and then the history going back so many years. And then obviously with the number of All Blacks that have come from each union. Um, and then, you know, there's this wonderful rivalry. Um, and, you know, so I've, I've always known that as an Auckland player, you always got to lift mentally and physically for that game because um, if you don't you'll come out second best and you could lose a whole season and that was especially for the Canterbury boys and back in that day but if you could beat Auckland <laughs> you're, you're king you know uh, so likewise you know we could have had a rug, rugged season but if we could tick off the box and, and having beaten Canterbury um, you know we would we'd, we'd, we'd uh, sleep well at night knowing that we've um, achieved something very special. You could reel out this whole list of um, real Canterbury um, icons and uh, again to, to, to look back at my career and, and know that I um, went, you know, went to war with those guys, um, whether it was at Lancaster Park at here at, at you know, my favourite ground in the world, Eden Park, I mean nothing compares and um, again you know, I'm thankfully looking back I, 
uh, I was thinking about, I, we, we won, um, I, I was in teams that we won all those games except one, which was my last year as, as, an, as an Auckland player in 99. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud of that record. I mean, it would have been lovely to go through my career having never lost to Canterbury. I mean, obviously Crusaders is a bit different, but um, we just I just happened to be lucky in the sense that I was in teams that we might have won by one point, but we, we still beat them. My advice for our boys uh, would always be that, you know, understand and appreciate obviously how big this game is. I mean, this, and, I, and I'm, I'm confident that every young Auckland player, this is drilled into them by their coaches, by their families, by their clubs, by the community, you know, you've got to beat Canterbury. I mean, it's just the way we are. And, and um, it's just the, the whole uniqueness and, the, and what makes it so special. Um, if they can understand that, um, recognising that to beat Canterbury, you've got to bring, you've, you've got to be at the peak of your attitude, your mental toughness, your physical prowess, everything has to be lined up, the stars have to line up. So, you know, again, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity too. I think um, it's something that every, again, for these young men going out tonight, it's, it's really about um, them recognising that this is a special fixture in a young man's life. They might not get another chance, they might play them 10 times. So if you if you can beat them once um, and you can um, do that, you know that's something to be really proud of. And if you can beat them ten times, even better. Mm -hmm. So, you know this is um, this is really what provincial rugby, I believe, is, is symbolised and embodied in this one fixture for the year. You know, for a young Auckland rugby player, it's all about playing Canterbury and, and hopefully beating them.